how important do you think Wing Chun concepts are for a Jeet Kune Do? Because, you know, some guys will say, you know, the trap doesn't work, you know, mm -hmm. um, Bruce Lee really threw away the Wing Chun at the end and he just... What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you got to understand that the, the concept of Wing Chun was definitely the foundation of JKD. I agree. Yes. Now, he did take other martial arts, you know, because Guru Dan told, told us that Bruce Lee took so many different martial arts. And he was a genius that he combined all the useful martial arts to him at that time and put into his theory, right? Mm. So he took savat, he took Muay Thai, yeah. he took boxing. He also had backgrounds in fencing, right? Yeah. Now that to speak that his folk was, was also phenomenal. Yes. The yeah. trapping works for him because he doesn't emphasize just on specifically closer and trapping. He's often yes. offensively, defensively, he's understanding the range difference. Yes. Because yeah. most people are going after trapping too much. They say, I agree. we got to go after this type of trapping. Yeah. It may never work because you're never going to put your hand like this. But imagine <laughs> we were grappling all of a sudden your hands are, is based against my neck. Then there's a trap. Exactly. Maybe, you're, maybe I'm punching. Maybe you try to defend. Maybe you try to deflect. That becomes a barrier to trap. So yeah. often the time in Wing Chun theory, we say we trap the line, not the hand. Mm, Most yeah. people think that I'm going to trap the hand. You don't trap the hand. You got to trap the line. Wow. Understand where the line goes, where the body goes. Then you trap the center line, not the hand, because the hand can move. Yeah. Then if you try to trap the hand, the hand moves out, then you got nothing to trap. Wow. And that's the way at least Steve taught us. And I believe yeah. that it does work for me. But for, for other people, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what's good, everybody? Today, I have a very, very special guest. He is a devote practitioner in many martial arts, including Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do, Kali, Silat, Muay Thai, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's an instructor and the technical director at the Francis Fong Martial Art Academy. He also has an incredible YouTube channel that just hit 300,000 subscribers. He has also trained all over the world with some of the best people martial arts has to offer and has no doubt become an amazing martial artist himself. His name is Kevin Lee. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Kevin. So, uh, where are you from? I was born in Taiwan. Wow. I was born in Taiwan. I was raised in Taiwan until I was 12 years old. Mm. And then uh, we, my family moved to Georgia directly. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Taiwan. So you're yeah. Taiwanese? I'm Taiwanese. Taiwanese. Yes. Wow. Did you yeah. do any martial arts in Taiwan I did. before you? Okay. I did. What so you... uh, as a kid, we have like after school programs. So my mom, my, my parents put me into like the after, after school program when I was like seven years old to uh. learn like, the traditional Chinese martial arts. Wow. Yeah. So I started with when I was seven years old, studying some of the Chinese martial arts, and then we moved to a different side of a town where there's no Kung Fu. And then my parents put me into Taekwondo. And I'm sure like mm. every, almost every other kid there at least stuns on Taekwondo or yeah. karate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, uh, what style of Kung Fu did you learn at first? Kung Fu, it was just traditional Kung Fu. It's a blended system. We call it Wushu. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I yeah, actually yeah. did Wushu in Louisiana yeah. as well a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About a yeah. year, so I understand. Mm -hmm. A lot of stretching, a yes. lot of very athletic. Yeah, yes, very, yeah. Oh, yeah. So wow. most of my flexibility came from Wushu. Man, mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. That's funny because yeah. I, did, I did Taekwondo first because, you know, mm -hmm. like I want to learn karate and my parents came in Taekwondo, so, you know. <laughs> and then, um, but that's where I learned the kicks and flexibility. And then when I did Wushu, same we stretch for like 30 minutes before every yep. practice. It's very, mm -hmm. very, you get very flexible. Lots of stretching, for sure. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. So then you learned the Wushu and then you started Taekwondo. Yep. And then you moved to the States. Yep. I moved to the States and I studied a little bit uh, Taekwondo continuously from there. And then at 16, 17, 16, 17 years old, that's when I met Sifu Francis. Wow. Man, mm -hmm. 17. Wow. So yeah. You already had some experience before you met him. A little bit. <laughs> and you all moved straight to Georgia here? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the yeah. reason is because my family was here. My my mom has family here in in, in Georgia. Mm. That's why when we move, we want to pick a place where we have the most family. Gosh, yeah, move back to the family. Okay, yeah, yeah. Gosh, gotcha. yeah, yeah. How did you run across uh, Seafood Francis Fall? Uh, his old old location was across the street from my house. Mm, so when I used to go to school at that awesome. time, I was in high school. We just drove. Well, I used to drive by his school every single morning. And one day I was like, you know what? Let's go check it out. Wow. And, and, and the old location was not like this. This oh. was, was really hard to find because it's down the basement. So yeah. imagine a shopping center, but on the very end of it, there's a, there's a stair going downstairs. Wow. That's where the old school used to locate. And it's hard to locate because you're like, I see a sign, but yeah. you can't find the location. <laughs> and then luckily I was, when I was looking, I found one of the students and I was like, Hey, uh, I'm looking for this, this location. He goes, Oh, let me take you there. 
Man, yeah. very secretive. Yeah, yeah, it's like almost yeah. like a hidden hidden treasure that you can't find. Wow. Man, yeah. Found it. There you go. Mm-hmm. Damn it, man. What was, do you remember like the first time you really like uh, trained with Sifu or like? Oh, absolutely first- amazing. I remember, <laughs> I still remember his first class. And it, wow. you know, and he, for those who have not taken class with Sifu, it's hard to describe his yes. energy. Very, his energy is just different. so different. Yeah. yeah like what different. you see on the video clip, he's way better in person. I agree. And oh, he's absolutely. a lot more charming yeah. too. <laughs> so the first time when I took his class, I was blown away. And I was like, I got to study with this guy. Because wow. it's, just, it's just amazing. Really? Yeah, uh, man. You're right. I'm the same way. I saw the videos. And then when I came here, it's like, wow. It's yeah. Wow. That's yeah. all I can say. That's, you can't really explain. It's wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's a word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious. So how long have you been like studying Wing Chun? Oh, wow. So let's see. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I would say at least 20 years now. 19, 20 years. I'm yeah, yeah. 16. 16 when I started, I'm 20, I'm 36, so yeah, almost 20 years. Wow, 36, I would have never guessed. Yeah, That's I'm 36, guess. 37 this year. Mm. Man, 37, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you look, man, you do not, you cannot tell. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So when you first met him and you came to the academy, what uh, what were you studying? You swing Chun or? So I you... started with two arts. At that time, mm. I, was a poor, uh, I was a poor student in high school. So I can only afford like a, a select the classes, I feel that, but yeah, I really okay. want to do Wing Chun at that time. Mm. My mom was like, "Hey, we don't have extra money for you, so I had to work. I had to find a job in hey. order for me to support that this hop." So I was, I was, yeah, I used to work at IHOP as a server, so I can take that money, pay for the tuition. Wow, and dedication. I, I, yeah, because I, yeah, I, I really want to study. Yeah, and I was like, "Which two arts should I start?" And I really like Wing Chun, and the secondary art that I really like was Kali. So yeah. I started Kali and Wing Chun almost at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. That's Impressive. before I started into like into JKD and Muay Thai and all this stuff. Yeah. When did you think you started getting into JKD and Muay Thai and stuff? JKD was probably a, a year later. Yeah. Muay Thai yeah. definitely a little later, like maybe four or five years later. Yeah. So you definitely had a base in Wing Chun first. Yes. And then you learned yes. these other ones. Yeah. And we'll see for that who told me you should take JKD. For most people that who takes Wing Chun will also find interest in JKD. Mm-hmm. So Sifu was like, why don't you take JKD? I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. Because you know? yeah. I really like Wun Chan. I just want to fo- focus on Wun Chan. Yeah. But Sifu was like, you should have some sort of grappling. You should also have some sort of kickboxing background. So that's yeah, how I started yeah. going back to like the foundation of kickboxing. Wow, that's a good point. Yeah. Speaking of uh, JKD and Wing Chun, you know, you hear a lot of guys on YouTube use the term sometimes interchangeably. Like, oh, Wing Chun, JKD. Can you explain to like the audience the difference between Wing Chun and then JKD? Wing Chun to me is well depending depending on the this the depending on which side that you take on this, right? Mm-hmm. I believe Wing Chun is it's a it's a way to enhance your attributes in close yeah. quarter combat system. Yeah. Uh, not to say that you can only train Wing Chun for close quarter combat. You know, like if you take a serious class, he doesn't teach just from trapping. No. He does he, grappling. He does kickboxing. He, he does it all. He does it, it's, it, all yeah. it's all Wing Chun, same time somehow. It's exactly. Like, yeah, it's like, what a minute. I thought we were here to study pure Wing like specifically just Wing yeah, Chun. Super but, traditional, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was like, no, not, no, no. For me, it's all blended. You got to yeah. understand kicking. You, understand, you have to understand punching. You got to understand how to grapple. So wow. for me, it's a way to uh, close a gap between multiple mm. different arts. Right. You, you imagine that you have one art, you have another arts, right? Wing Chun is like the merry, the merry, the merry uh, center. That, you kind of wow. put everything together. Yeah. That's how I look at Wing Chun. Yeah. And for me, Wing Chun provides a basic fundamental of skeletal structure. Oh, definitely. I would. You know, it's definitely. like structure oh, fundamentally, yeah. it's the most important part. So really? not only you have sensitivity, you have position, you have what's called a skeletal alignment. And those are the things that I love about Wing Chun. And then right. on top of that, you have... JKD, which is can contribute your your long range for kicking, your striking, mm. your cardio training, and yeah. so forth. I think those are the attributes that we have to develop all the time. Wow, yeah. Mm. That's a good point. That's a good point that you see with a lot of really good Wing Chun guys, when they do learn other stuff like yourself or mm. Sifu, they pick it up so fast and it works. Whatever they pick up, whether it be Jeet Kune Do, Muay Thai, mm-hmm. Kali, it, it works somehow. And they're able yeah. to use what they learn from Wing Chun and just apply it instantly. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, I, I, when I was in Thailand, I was training with one of my clinch instructors. The way he teach me how to clinch is exactly the same way how Steve would teach me how to cheese out. And I look at him like, uh, yeah. you do Wing Chun? He goes, what's that? Red, he doesn't know wow. what Wing Chun is. But yeah. the first thing he taught me was, dude, 
I was like, hey, I do this. And he goes, do this. I'm like, oh. I know how to do this. <laughs> and that was the first thing he teach me in clinch. He goes, you got to know how to clinch people. They grab your neck. You need to pummel the bicep. They try to grab you. Don't let them grab. So now you do this. Now as I look at this, I'm like, that looks like Wing Chun. Yeah. He's teaching me how to cheese out with the guys. So wow. don't let them grab your neck. So then you start doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like similar thing, but just different names. Correct. Wow. Correct. Wow. Yeah. I'm curious. I know when you look at a lot of other Wing Chun on YouTube, you know, a lot of times you see it, it's not really as effective. As I would say here, it's not really effective or it wouldn't really work. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think, like, the Wing Chun out there is different from the Wing Chun that Sifu teaches? Oh, man. that's I, I think that there's no bad martial arts in general. I think there's mm -hmm. a practitioner. It's really based mm -hmm. on the practitioner, right? And I think that um, because the culture of Wing Chun, oh, I mean, maybe it's just not Wing Chun. I think martial arts in general... We sort of sometimes we lock itself ourselves into a bubble, mm, so yeah. it's like we were taught this works, but we never really explore the option why and how it works. Mm. If that makes sense, yeah. So like for works. instance, right? And I'm actually coming up with the episode sooner or later. You guys may see this on my YouTube channel. Mm. Talk about why kung fu is not effective in modern time. Mm, and okay. and my take on this is because a lot of time we train martial arts, but we don't put enough time to practice resistance training. Mm. What I mean by that is, do you, do you spend time to actually find yourself to grapple with other people? Do you actually try to apply Wing Chun in kickboxing? Do you try to apply Wing Chun in different scenarios? Yeah. Like, if you just cheese out yeah. with a guy every single day, does that actually make you better? Mm. Right? That, that's the thing we sort of explore with Sifu. It's like, why do I spend 10 hours to cheese out? Well, we can actually learn how to cheese out, but let's do the application. Here's how we got, but like last time in class, yeah. what did you guys do? You were grappling. Yeah. See, was like, yeah, here's yeah, how you yeah. grab oh, yeah. in yeah. Wun Chun class, right? Yeah. So we apply the same mechanic from standing, but we just put that into ground, groundwork. Wow. So to me, it's all about finding the application and mm. not, not saying that I'm not taking like any, any credential yeah. away from any Wun Chun instructor. Yeah. But to me, I prefer to, to find a mid ground of train the technique, but still be able to find the time to apply the technique. And that will actually become a better, uh, for me, that will become a better practitioner. That's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, now, to train the technique and then the why of why, because yeah, with, when you train with seafood, he'll tell you why it works. He'll yes. show you why. Oh, yes. uh, you, just have, you, you see him automatically it works. Oh, yeah, yep. you understand it very, very much yep. so. Mm -hmm. um, do you, how important do you think Wing Chun concepts are for a Jeet Kune Do? Because, you know, some guys will say, you know, the trap didn't work, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce Lee really threw away the Wing Chun at the end and he just... What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you got to understand that the, the concept of Wing Chun was definitely the foundation of JKD. I agree. Yes. Now, he did take other martial arts, you know, because Guru Dan told, told us that Bruce Lee took so many different martial arts. And he was a genius that he combined all the useful martial arts to him at that time and put into his theory, right? Mm. So he took Savat. He took more yeah. time. He took boxing. He also had backgrounds in fencing. Right yeah. now, not to speak that his footwork was, was also phenomenal. Yes. The yeah. trapping works for him because he doesn't emphasize just on specifically close range trapping. He's often yes. offensively, defensively, he's understanding the range difference. Yes. Because yeah. most people aren't going after trapping too much. They say, I agree. we got to go after this type of trapping. Yeah. It may never work because you're never going to put your hand like this. But imagine we were grappling, all of a sudden your hands are, is based against my neck. Then there's a trap. Maybe, exactly. you're, maybe I'm punching you. Maybe you try to defend. Maybe you try to deflect. That becomes a barrier to trap. So yeah. often times in Wing Chun theory, we say we trap the line, not the hand. Mm, Most yeah. people think that I'm going to trap the hand. You don't trap the hand. You got to trap the line. Wow. Understand where the line goes, where the body goes. Then you trap the center line, not the hand, because the hand can move. Yeah. Then if you try to trap the hand, the hand moves out. Then you got nothing to trap. Wow. And that's the way at least Steve taught us. And I believe yeah. that it does work for me. But for, for other people, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. See, it's really taking what the person in front of you is giving you rather than trying to force it to work. Because when you do that. Yes. Be natural. Yeah. Be natural. And that's what Lucy says. You got to be water. Wow. You got to flow with the yeah. positions. Man. Wow. Um, I know when Wing Chun, the first form is Seelum Tao. Yeah. How important do you think that is for like a beginner, Wing Chun guy, just starting out? How important do you think that is for him? I think it's important. Uh, we stress a lot of on positions. 
Uh, mm. Simmental, not just talk about a little idea, because the word Simmental means little imagination or little idea, right? Mm. But the idea comes from the center of gravity of the body. Your positions are the primer. It's just almost like we talk about form in martial arts, but every combat sport has a form. You talk about boxing. Boxing has boxing form. You're not going to do a jab like this, right? We we'll talk yeah. about the hands, hands up, chin down, eyes forward, your shoulders up. You talk about the position. Those are forms that we talk about. Wing Chun, we, we talk about just a position. Everything is stationary without moving. So if, when you move your body, your hand stays in the same position. So for me, it's when you understand the swimming towel, it's understand your correlation between your body and your core muscle. Understand how to sink your body. Understand your position. Understand that when you move, what stabilizes the body, what moves the elbow, what moves the wrist, and so forth. And that's mm. a co correlation that we have to understand in the first form. Wow. Yeah, like, just like you said, sinking, like, it's sinking's hard. At least sinking's for me, it's, it's very, um, at first it's very unnatural, mm -hmm. but you see the effectiveness of it. And, like, the form, when I first had my first private lesson with Sifu Fong, I really learned that how important the form is, that every aspect of the form has a purpose. Exactly. It's effective. And it's yes. like, whereas, with, I don't think with most martial arts, you don't really have that to where, Every specific movement in the way your elbow is, and that all has a purpose. And yes. there's a reason of why you do it. So, Correct. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a must. It's a, yeah. it's a must. Mm -hmm. Man. Um, what would you say the difference is from, let's say, like your traditional Wing Chun trapping versus your Jun Fan or JKD trapping? Uh, traditional Wing Chun trapping may not have the kickboxing or the so-called like sub submission aspects. So when you, when you look at a lot of traditional trapping, you can find the clips online anywhere. Most of the time, they either start with she saw range or it'll start with the, we'll put the reference in point mm -hmm. range, right? Jun Fan trapping comes from multiple different dimensions, right? When Bruce take it, yeah. he goes, we got to think about trapping to get boxing. So a lot of times we'll say trapping to boxing range, trapping to elbow, trapping to hip, but trapping maybe the back, the guy backs up. So you got something with trap into kicking range. So Jun Fan mm. adds a lot of these aspects from punching, trapping, also punching to trapping, kicking to trapping. Then you have grabbing to trapping. Then you have takedown. So you're trapping, doesn't work. All of a sudden you go for double leg. So mm. now there's grappling aspect to it. So that kind of changed the dynamic, how he blended in into Wing Chun trapping. Wow. From his own perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not going to see the traditional Wing Chun guy going from trapping to a double leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. the structure is different you yes know, like but you'll, you, you'll see a JK guy trap into a double leg or maybe trap into a guillotine right yeah. and those are the aspects that will probably separate that also from the traditional uh, Wing Chun trend so I know you're familiar with the term economy of motion yes can you kind of explain what that term means to me it's how you flow hmm. so everybody's gonna have a different definition when it comes to like the term yeah. For me, it's definitely what's the easiest way and effective way to, to achieve your, your goal, right? Mm -hmm. And we will hear the type, the, the, this type of term in Wing Chun a lot, but it's also quite useful in Jiu Jitsu. It's like, this technique costs more effort. So why don't we look at the technique and see how can we do differently to make the technique more, a lot more eff effective without using mm -hmm. a lot of effort, yeah. Yeah. right? So that to me is like, this motion makes sense because it wastes less energy. This motion doesn't make sense because you use more muscle. So we're looking for the effortless term and way to kind of achieve what we're trying to accomplish. And that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Wow. You inject just enough to get your desired effect, but not too much. Correct. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I, it's the same way how I look at sweeps or let's say for a takedown, right? Mm -hmm. For me, because I'm, I'm a smaller guy. So it may not make sense for me to lift and pick this guy to dump him on the ground. Yeah. But if you understand the, the motion of breaking the bounce, Breaking their, their, their balance enough so I can easily achieve the sweep. Wouldn't that be a lot easier? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I, how I look at things, how to achieve things from a different perspective. And in terms of like effort or structure. Man, yeah. And like, mm -hmm. and for me, I'm a taller guy. So if I do go for a double and slam them, just because it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean that you're wrong or I'm wrong. Exactly. Because exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Every, everyone has a different body type. What works for me may not work for you. But works for you may not work for me and same vice versa so that's why we study so many different options yeah and we might only choose two of all of five options you might choose three because this three works better for you but it may not work for me and that's okay because everyone's just have different experiences different preferences wow yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah speaking of size i gotta ask you you know mm -hmm. 
you hear a lot of things online. Does size matter in a fight? Yes and no. And here's the funny part. Uh, I think size matters the most when two individuals has a similar skill set. Yes. Very, okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, let's say for sparring. Definitely if I spar with the beginner. I, I, like even just for grapple, I can I can hundred percent for grapple because I grapple with guy who's like two two hundred yeah. pounds. Yeah, I will submit the left and right. Yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah. Right. yeah you're because good. because you're the skill set, the skill level is different. When the skill levels are getting closer and closer, the size matters a lot. I yeah. if I roll with another black belt, but this black belt has a like forty, even just forty pounds heavier than me, you'll see the difference. Yeah, and that's it, just unfortunately it does matter in a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of time we just have to keep polishing our skill. Yeah, and polishing our timing. Yeah, that's that, a good yeah. point. Yeah, I agree. Because when you just spar people, you have a guy just knows. Let's say he's two hundred pounds, but just knows the very beginner boxing basics. Just beginner is gonna be hard. It's gonna yes. be hard yes. versus the guys who know anything. He's just coming through. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't beat them. But when they start to learn stuff, it is it's much harder. Definitely, really yeah. So then you have to be that much better to be able to you know exactly. You just have to have a better timing, like. There is a legendary Muay Thai fighter, Senchai. And if you watch his clips, he will spar with everybody in the room. And he beats everybody. Mm. And that's because he's so such a high level. Yeah. He, that he doesn't oh, yeah. care. Wow. Yeah, he spar with like people that's like twice his big size. And he just Jeez. knocks them down, sweeps them left and right, and laugh about it. Wow. Man. That's because yeah. he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Are you turned with the uh, are you familiar with the term like attributes? Like uh, mm -hmm. okay. How important do you think attributes are versus the technique of a move? They're both important. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so when we talk about martial arts, we talk about first, for, first and foremost, what do we talk about when we talk about training martial arts? Everybody talks about, I want this technique. I want this technique. Yeah. What's the ultimate technique that I've I can learn? Yeah. Yeah, I said, yeah. What's the ultimate technique that I can learn that I can beat everybody? The truth is, without attributes, your technique doesn't work. Yeah. They, they totally. go hand in hand. Right, Very. so we have coordination drills, we have conditioning drills, yeah. and those drills are specifically to raise your attributes. And the way I look at it is like, if you guys play video games, you, you play yeah. video games, yeah, 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 yeah you gotta talk about the attributes, right? So oh, you, know, yeah. you don't talk about the strength, <laughs> the speed, you, gotta max you know, up yeah, yeah, you gotta max it up because yeah. you can't be like, oh man, my stamina sucks, and I'm not smart with you. Maybe I have good technique, but my cardio sucks. Guess what happens two minutes into the round? Gas. I gassed out. Gas. So it doesn't matter how good I am at two minutes because I'm not gassed out. And even, even for anybody who's not as good as you, they can still beat you because your cardio just goes out of window. Yeah. Right? Wow. So you got to have the attributes to, to, to sort of maintain your skill sets. Without your attributes, all your skill sets just kind of sort of fade yes. away. Hey, yeah. I totally it's agree. Like you have the best yeah. magic in, in the game. You have the best thing in the game. But you have no, you, you have no uh, attributes. You, you have no potion to like heal yourself. Oh, done. Yeah. You, oh, you know what I'm saying? Totally. I, I can't just spend my, my tech whole day long. Cause yeah. now I can't, I can't cast my spell. Cause I'm all of magic. Man. Uh, it's the same way. Yeah. I, I know, um, a lot of guys probably see their familiar with your channel and in this academy, you see a lot of drills done here. And I, mm -hmm. that's one thing I really like. Well, someone that's not, experience they see these drills oh that wouldn't work in a fight that wouldn't work in sparring and i at one point i was like that at first mm -hmm. thinking that wouldn't that's the but really it's to really build up your attributes yes it's to get that sensitivity that timing so then when you actually do spar fight you're that much better yes. it's not all i see the drills now it's not really of oh you're gonna do this exactly in a fight but it's like taking fighting or sparring and putting like one aspect of it. Correct. And then training that one aspect to get your attributes up. Because yes. that's like the most important. Yes. That yeah. is correct. Because because we have so many drills that develop your yes. attributes. So, like yeah. heavy back. Boxers, keep boxers, even Muay Thai guys hit heavy back. It's developed attributes. The speed back, develop mm -hmm. attributes. Same thing with the wind dummy, also developing attributes. They are drills that des designed specifically to help you understand the martial arts better or the combat sports better. But a lot of times people will look at this drill goes, that would never work. Is that, yeah. But would never claim was for fighting. Yes. Chi wow. was never meant for fighting, by the way. Yeah. But a lot of people go, oh, why do you do Chi Yeah. Develop attributes. Yeah. I, I think, can, yeah. Man, I think too, part of that's needing a good teacher to teach you why to do Chi Sao. Like, see if falling again. You're not going to do Chi Sao in a fight, no. But yeah. there's so many concepts and attributes that you need mm -hmm. that you're going to use what you learn from Chi Sao in the sparring or fighting. Correct. 
like sensitivity, you know, center line, all those things. You're going to use that in sparring. You're going to use that in fighting. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. And those are important factors for us to understand as well. Really? Yeah. 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 How important do you think sensitivity is for like a important. Wing Chunner? Oh, you know? Yeah. In, <clears throat> in terms of martial arts in general, yeah. unless you're doing pure kickboxing, I think that most martial arts need sensitivity. Jiu-Jitsu. What's the first thing you do? You grapple. Judo. What's the first thing you do? You grapple. Yeah, yeah. Right? We'll talk about clenching. What MMA? What's the first thing you do when they tackle you? You start to wizard the arm. Start grabbing the neck. Those are sensitivity. Those are, are timing based, time based technique. If I wait too long to respond to your technique, I'm behind time. Yes. That means I'm going to be late to every technique that you're about to do on me. Mm. But if I have the sensitivity, I can either stop you or prevent it from happening. Wow. And that's why yeah. sensitivity is so important. It may or may not appear to a lot of people because they look at sensitivity like, oh, you do Wing Chun, you only probably only do this. <laughs> but there's so many different combinations that we can talk about or maybe applications. Yeah, because then too, the touch, <clears throat> the, you feeling someone's movement and touch is way faster than you seeing, I'm seeing you punch and I got to move. Exactly. If I can feel that, I can respond instantly almost yeah. and move. It's, yeah. Especially when our bodies are connected, you should be able to feel what their body is about to move. Because you can feel Man. the tension, oh, the twitch wow, of yeah. a muscle. Everything matters at that point. And that's wow. why a lot of times we say, stick to your partner so that we can feel their tension. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I've got to ask you, how did you meet uh, Guru Dan? Through yeah, Sifu. Everybody wow. here met Guru Dan, Ajahn Chai. All my instructors are met through Sifu Francis. Yeah. Like he's got this all this connection with... Yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. They, they yeah. met a long time ago. And then Sifu brings Guru Dan, used to be three times a year at, that, at, at, at my time. And now we cut it down to two times a year. Um, but Guru comes in periodically twice a year to teach a seminar here. We also travel to see Guru out in LA to mm. train with him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember your first time meeting him? How that was? I remember. Yeah. Yeah. He was wow. at the old school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like Guru is amazing. Like he, it, if you ever train with Guru, Dan, it's like you're drinking out of a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, there's so much water, so much knowledge. It's like, he's showing yeah. you like at least 10 variations in one minute. One technique, 10 variations, easily. And you ask him a question, he'll give another 20 variations. You're like, how do you remember all this? Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. that's cool. Yeah. And I can tell, like, just by just watching interviews and talk, just talking about martial arts, you see, like, wow, like, this is a well of knowledge. Yeah. So much, this is, yeah. wow. He's, like, a tell. martial art enthusiastic. Man. <laughs> Everything about Guru Dan's martial arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah. Um, do you have, like, any advice for, like, a beginner in martial arts just learning, maybe saw a YouTube channel, is, like, Trying to get into martial arts, do you have any like advice or tips to give them from starting find out? Find a good location. I definitely say suggest people like if you if you find a good location that you, you trust, you like the environment, people are friendly to you, train. It doesn't matter what type of system. Because a lot of people mm. pick system over instructor. I say instructor first. I, I, I see, Having I a good I instructor is so Man, important. It's so, I totally agree. Yeah. If yeah. you have an instructor that only wants to sell you the technique or maybe, or maybe like uh, try to lock you down for something, I... I, I usually just walk away from those people. Instructor mm -hmm. must be open-minded. To me, at least. All my instructors yeah. have the same, same, same unique characteristic. They open mind. Yeah. They allow me to train in different martial arts and they all correlate each other. Yeah. And that's all my instructors are Good point. Good point. Yeah. yeah, Stephen Fong, he's, even though he's very much a Wing Chun master, a Wing Chun foundation, he's still very open-minded. Yes. Like you, you wouldn't imagine someone this skilled Usually people like, like people that are that skilled, they're only, oh, this is the way, I only do this, this and that, but he's still very open-minded. Still yeah. go to the punching, the kicking, and the grappling, that everything. Headbutts, yeah. yeah. Correct. It's incredible. Incredible. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the difference between Jun Fan and Jeet Kune Do is, if there is a difference, in your opinion? To my understanding, Jun Fan was the martial art base for JKD concept. Mm. Well, we fight what Guru told us is that JKD is really technically belonged to Bruce Lee because that was a concept that he came out with. You can't do JKD without understanding Jun Fan. Jun Fan is yeah. a core curriculum that he teaches understanding how to punch, understanding how to kick, understanding how the footwork goes. It's like the core curriculum. Once you understand it, we go, we then move into the conceptual part of, you know, the training, which is JKD. Taking what's good for your body and then get rid of what's assets, you know, that your body doesn't need. Wow. Yeah. Last question. Uh, can you name one martial art that is like underrated, slept on, that people should train more? Wing Chun. 
<laughs> you heard it here, folks. There Wen you Chan. go. Yeah, I'd have to say Wen Chan. It's not because I, I favor much Wen Chan. I just think that he has so much to offer. Very, yeah. But you yeah. have to find a good teacher that's willing to teach you. Man, yeah. And right. so come train with Sifu Huang. That, yeah, uh -huh. I'm telling you, man. Um, yeah, I see now it really, you can learn any art. I think it really depends on your instructor, how they teach it to you because it, it's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're running out of time, but thank you. This is Kevin Lee. It was a great, great talk. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And um, if you're new to this channel, make sure to go follow this man, Kevin Lee. If you type it in YouTube, it's going to pop up. Um, thank you for watching this. And with that out of the way, stay safe. Thank you for watching. Thank you, guys.